Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Cayenne and I'm here today to talk about Black Buck by Matteo Escarapur. This book is an ARC. It is coming out January 2021. I received it back in August, I want to say, and I read it um, in a haze of panic. It is not a thriller, but it feels like a thriller. I'm stealing that from um, a review on Goodreads because it is so accurate. This book grips you by the tiny baby hairs on the back of your head and it drags you through it panting screaming it is amazing so this is going to be a shorter video than um i probably will make for the most part because i'm just going to be talking about this one book but it is one of the very first arcs i received and it is coming out this january and it's definitely going to be in my top 10 books for the year so i wanted to give it its own attention to be able to talk about how great it is and tell people to pre-order it and go enjoy it um this book is about darren he is a 22 year old living in New York. He works at a Starbucks in the bottom floor of a big office building downtown. And he is pretty much done with life. He graduated high school um, as a valedictorian. He, he's super smart. He was supposed to go to college, but instead he's chosen to stay home and get a job to work to take care of his mom who is sick. And he's just pretty content. He's not happy, but he's content. He's doing his own thing. He has this long-term girlfriend, Soraya, who is the love of his life and is an angel. She's one of the best parts of the book. And he is just uh, minding his own business, living his life, until one day he sells a um, high-powered businessman on trying a different coffee than he normally gets, and that changes his life. Which, sidebar, my job, I work as a Starbucks barista. I work in Animal Kingdom. And this this whole story hinges on him selling this different drink to this high-powered businessman and he does such a good job selling it that he gets offered a job in sales right and i just i have a complaint i'm gonna i'm gonna read to you this chunk okay so the guy who um ends up hiring him basically he doesn't know it at the time obviously but every day he comes in and he orders a vanilla sweet cream cold brew um which is a real starbucks drink it is cold brew, it is vanilla syrup, and it is our sweet cream, which is basically just half and half heavy cream and vanilla syrup. And that's what he orders every day. And normally, because they know him, he's a regular, he comes in multiple times a day and orders this. Normally when they see him coming, they go ahead and make it and have it for him when he comes up. But this day, Darren decides not to do that, right? So here's what it says. I served customers on the adjacent register until he looked up and said, hey, vanilla sweet cream cold brew, like always, you remember, right? By now, the last of the morning customers had grabbed their drinks and it was just us at the counter. I don't think you want that today, I said. So this is the whole point. It's cool. He's like selling him on something else. But what does he sell him on? What's the new drink that he sells him on? Because I always hear you're on your phone talking about efficiency and the vanilla sweet cream cold brew isn't built for that. You want something like etc, etc, etc. If you'll indulge me, I'm confident that the nitro cold brew with sweet cream is what you actually want. It has 10 grams less sugar than your regular, 40 fewer calories, and 140 milligrams more caffeine. But at the end of the day, those are just numbers. So if you buy the nitro cold brew and don't like it, you can come back and I'll give you your regular free of charge. What do you think? Okay. So, first off, I've worked at Starbucks off and on for two years. I know people who've worked there a lot longer. Nobody knows, nobody knows the calorie content, the caffeine content. We don't know that off the top of our head. Usually if people ask, what we do is like, we pull out our phones in the back and, and look it up on the Starbucks app. We just don't have that information. Because for one thing, there's, the way that Starbucks works is there's all these different drinks that are meant to be modified. Nobody usually orders a regular vanilla sweet cream cold brew. I mean, that's a bad example because people do order that regular drink, but like people are always modifying stuff. We don't hold onto that information floating around. And I certainly don't have it for two different drinks to be able to compare back and forth. Like that's just wild. Unless he looked this up ahead of time, which he could have, but it's not mentioned in the book that he looked this up ahead of time. He doesn't have that information just like floating around in his head. I don't care how good of a Starbucks barista you are. There's, there's other things that you would be worried about over memorizing that. Secondly, the difference between the two drinks is that one is nitro and one is just regular cold brew. That That's not like a life-changing difference like most guests if you give them one and they normally order the other one they wouldn't even notice anyway that is my only complaint about this book I just spent like eight years raining about it but that's it the rest of this book is perfect and I recognize that that is a very small issue that is specific to me and like five other Starbucks partners in the world but I had to get that off my chest anyway so he sells this 
who turns out to be this highfalutin CEO of a startup company called Someone on this new drink, um, he's really impressed and he hires, well, he doesn't hire him on the spot, but he offers him a job opportunity on the spot to meet him later that night and um, interview once he gets off his shift at Starbucks. And Darren is completely unimpressed by this concept. He just, like I said, he's content, he's ready to go on with his life. But of course, he ends up doing it, he gets the job, and he is the only black man at this company. Herein lies the problem. Everyone ranges from casually racist with small microaggressions to high key some of the worst racism I have ever read in a book. And that's where we get into the thrilly part. This book is painful. We spent all of this summer talking about like sitting with your discomfort and like white allies don't get to take a break because we are able to step away from it and that's privilege whereas black and brown folk have to live with it all the time. This book is all about sitting with your discomfort. It is so... Me reading this as a white woman, I was so uncomfortable even just reading about the stuff that Darren was going through. It's it's awful. It's cartoonish to the point like it becomes almost surreal even though it's very real life. This whole book is formatted like it is, um, it's kind of a frame story. It's written first person but it's written as though it's a self-help book that Darren has written retrospectively about his life and how people can pursue that path for themselves and um you that gave me personally at first a sense of relief that like well he gets out this he comes out the other side but then you start reading things that you're like oh i mean he's still alive but is he okay like what happens to him after this the side characters are beautiful and vibrant soraya love her frodo love him the villains who i'm not gonna name are cartoonishly awful but also very very real. I'm not saying cartoonishly to imply they're not realistic or like they're not 3D. They're super 3D. They're super realistic but it's one of those things where it's like they're so awful surely they can't be real but also yeah like that's that's real life. That's a lot of black and brown folks folks day-to-day -day life. Um, this book <laughs> I can't like I can't get over it. For one thing check out that title title check out that cover i think it is so beautiful it is vibrant it is bright the spine is beautiful let me get my face out of the way i love it so much i am so thankful this was my second ever arc that i received um the first one was hush by dylan farrow that one already came out so i'm not going to do its own special video but my goal is hopefully I'll get more arcs in the future and I'll be able to do an individual um, video for each of them just to spotlight them and to thank the publisher. I guess I should say the publisher. This was published by Houghton Mifflin's Harcourt. Um, I got this um, through an email chain. I applied for it. Super thankful. Love it a whole lot. This is seriously one of the best books I've ever read and it was super cool that it's my second arc ever. It also came with a really cool sticker that um, I don't think the logo is... Yeah, no. He, he has like a branded logo that he is associated with this book. It's not actually on the cover or in the book, but um, I just saw on the author's Instagram he's releasing... Um, he has like a hoodie that has a logo and like hats and stuff. I got a sticker with the arc. I'm going to link his Instagram. Um, I'm going to link an interview where he's, it's actually a video where he's talking about the book for librarians, but I thought it was a really good overview of his perspective writing the book and like what he thinks the book is about and that sort of thing. I'm going to link that down below, Instagram down below, uh, a link to pre-order down below. This is such a good book. Super timely. The ending took my heart out and broke me over the spine of the book. I, that's a really mixed analogy, but you know what I'm going for. Um, excellent, excellent book. Highly recommend it. Five stars for me, for sure. Uh, Black Buck by Mateo Ascarapor. I hope I'm saying that right. I did some Googling to, to see if I could find him pronouncing it, but I couldn't, so that's my best guess. Um, please read it. Please buy it. I enjoyed it so, so much. I would recommend this for anyone who is interested in learning more about race in America, learning more about corporate work, corporate world, corporate life in America. Um, it has some really vivid depictions of New York City and living there, which is nice as someone who I've never been to New York City. Um, the furthest east I've been is where I live now, Orlando, Florida. That doesn't count as east. We're in a whole nother universe. Um, I would recommend this for folks who it's very funny, but it's like a black comedy. So the dark humor, if you're into that, read this. Um, it's great. I love it. So that's all I have for you today. Um, like I said, this is just a little short video where I get to talk about Black Buck. 
Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, if you hated it, thumbs up, thumbs down, you know how that works. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you think of this book. Tell me if it appeals to you. Tell me how awful the lighting is. Just comment and say hi. I'd love to hear from you. I also have just recently posted my wrap up for November. I know it's the middle of December, but when you're first starting your channel and you're as all over the place and awkward as I am, you make do with these sorts of things. So <laughs> go check that out. Say hi. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.